level of conscious realization. C. In the ordered purpose which guides the choice by a master of one of the seven paths of endeavor. Thus choice is based on knowledge and not on desire. D. In the conscious transmutation he undertakes in the work of evolution, and in the gradual transference of his own life, and the life of his group, into the monotic aspect which is reflected in the Buddhic. E. On Admic Levels. A. In the selective work of the Adventist manifestation, and the discriminative power which guides all action relating to his own planet, and the two others associated with the Earth, as a systemic triangle. B. The adaptation of groups diva and human, to certain types of influence, and vibration, which emanate extrasystemically, and which from high cosmic levels play upon groups, fostering certain attributes for which we have, as yet, no terminology. C. The synthesizing work of the Brahma aspect as it works out in the blending of the four minor rays into the third major. D. C-H-E-F-A-C-T-O-R-O-F-M-A-N-A-S 503 which results in planetary obscuration in connection with five of the heavenly men and which as in the previous work of synthesis concerns microcosmic evolution and is participated in by man. I would call attention to an interesting point, as more and more of the monads are resolved back into their source. It produces a gradual obscuration of the particular heavenly man in whose body they are the cells. Though this may look to human vision as extending over a profoundly long period, from the point of view of universal or group consciousness it is occurring now. For instance, such an event is the obscuration of the manifestation of the logos of our Earth scheme is already in process and began in the Orient age. 7. As regards monodic discrimination, adaptability purpose and transmutative power it is needless to enlarge. All these ideas and concepts are of value only in so far as they produce within the thinker a more intelligent appreciation of the grandeur of the divine plan, and appropriation of the energy and force which is his by right of participation in the processes of manifestation, and a wise cooperation in the furtherance of the evolutionary plan as it affects him individually and his groups. Section 2. Division C. T-H-E-G-O-I-C-R-A-Y-A-N-D-S-O-L-A-R-F-I-R-E. I. C-N-A-T-U-R-E-O-F-T-H-E-C-A-U-S-A-L-B-O-D-Y. 1. 2. It is formed by the contact of the two fires of spirit and matter. It is produced at individualization. 2. The nature of permanentatoms. 1. Their purpose. A. They are force distributors. B. Conservers of faculty. C. Assimilators and transmuters. D. E, vehicles of memory. 2. Their place in the egoic body. A. The astral permanent atom. B. The atomic triangle. 3. The spirulli in the egoic ray. A. The composition of the permanent atoms. B. The flames and fiery energy. C. The three fires. 4. Summary. 1. Wheels are centers of energy. A. Centers of force. 3. The egoic lotus. B. The causal body, the monodic heart center. 504. 2. The 12 petal lotus. T H E G O 
I-C-R-A-Y-A-N-D-S-O-L-A-R-F-I-R-E 505 A. The Knowledge Pedals B. The Love Pedals C. The Sacrifice Pedals 3. Summary I. The N-A-T-U-R-E-O-S-T-H-E-G-O-I-C-O-R-C-A-U-S-A-L-D-O-D-Y The subject of the ego of Ray and its relation to the second fire is one of vital import to three types of people. Those who are interested in the true psychology, or in the evolution of the psyche. Those who are on or nearing the path, and hence are coming more and more into touch with their own ego. Those who work with the souls of men, the servers of the race. The reason for this is because in the new comprehension of this subject, that of the ego functioning in the causal body, comes the ability to work scientifically with the problem of one's own evolution, and to do good work in aiding the evolution of one's brother. 1. Egoic manifestation is produced through the medium of two fires. somewhat the subject of the ego of ray and the causal body, viewing it from the standpoint of the microcosm, and leaving the student to work out for himself the analogies where the logos is concerned, conjuring him to bear in mind that the analogy must ever be drawn with due emphasis upon the fact that all that the human unit can comprehend is the manifestation of the solar logos in a physical body. In all manifestation, as we well know, we have duality producing triplicity. Spirit meets and contacts matter. The result of that contact is the birth of the sun, or the ego, the consciousness aspect. The egoic manifestation is therefore the middle aspect, the place of it one meant. 506-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-C-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E And after new evolutionary cycles, the place of balance, or of equilibrium. It should be noted that the analogy between the logos and man is not accurate, for man has to undergo the whole process within the solar periphery, whilst the logos within that periphery goes through the stage analogous to that which the man undergoes when his astral sheath clothes itself with etheric matter and he takes physical incarnation, which was touched upon when considering the subject of fire by friction. It will consequently be apparent that, in considering the manifestation of the ego, we are dealing with the point of central emphasis in man's threefold manifestation. We are concerning ourselves with that division of his nature which concerns the process of making him the perfect six-pointed star during the preliminary stage, the threefold personality and the threefold triad merged and blended and perfectly produced through the intermediate point the causal body, and which, when the physical body is eliminated, makes him the five-pointed star or perfected Manasaputra. To state the whole in terms of fire, the causal body is produced by means of the positive light, or fire, of the spirit electric fire, meaning the negative fire of matter, or fire by friction, this causes the blazing forth of solar fire. This central blaze inevitably in due course burns up the third fire, or absorbs its essence, and is itself eventually blended with the fire of spirit and passes out of objective display. I seek here to deal with the subject of the causal body in two different ways, one along the old lines and the other strictly along the lines of the cold electrical phenomena. 2. By Egoic manifestation is produced with individualization. The causal body is that sheath of mental substance which is formed at the moment
moment of individualization. G-E-G-O-I-C-R-A-Y-A-N-D-S-O-L-A-R-F-I-R-E-507 The contact of the two fires The force or energy that pours through from the higher planes, the breath of the monad, if you care so to term it, produces a vacuum, or something analogous to a bubble in toilet, and the sheath of the causal body the ring pass not of the central life is formed. Within this sheath are to be found three atoms, which have been termed the mental unit, the astral permanent atom and the physical permanent atom. They correspond individually to the seventh principle of each of the three persons of the microcosmic triad, a reflection in the three worlds of the microcosm of the three persons of the logo of Trinity. H. P. B. Hints at this. In connection with the Logos when she speaks of the visible sun being the seventh principle of the Brahma aspect, the physical permanent atom of the Logos point six five sixty six two. The nature of Hermanantatam 1. The purpose of the permanent atoms. The three permanent atoms are in themselves centers of force, are those aspects of the personality which hold to the fires of substance, or of objectivity, it cannot be too strongly pointed out at this juncture that, in considering the threefold man in the three worlds, we are dealing with substance which in connection with logoic manifestation is considered the dense physical. Surrounding these three atoms is the causal sheet. Answering the following purposes. It separates one unit of egoic consciousness from another unit of consciousness, yet is itself part of the gaseous body, the fifth cosmic physical subplane, in the physical body of the planetary logos, who is the central life of any particular group of monads. This fact has been little appreciated, and merits careful consideration. 65S, D, 3, 143. 66S, D, I, 574. 508 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire. It holds its spiritual potentialities and its inherent ability to respond to the higher vibration, from the moment of individualization till it is discarded at initiation, the life within steadily develops these potentialities and produces certain definite results by the utilization of the three permanent atoms. It gradually vivifies and awakens them until, on the three planes, the central life has an adequate point of contact which can originate the necessitated vibration in the matter of the plane. The permanent atoms on each plane serve a fourfold purpose as regards the central or ego of life. They are the distributors of a certain type of force. They are the conservers of faculty or ability to respond to a particular vibration. They are the assimilators of experience and the transmitters of that experience into quality. This is the direct result of the work of the egoic ray as it plays upon the atom. They hold hid the memory of the unit of consciousness. When fully vibrant they are the raison d'etre for the continuity of the consciousness of the man functioning in the causal body. This distinction must be carefully made. We must always remember in studying these difficult matters that we are dealing with the logo of dense physical body and that. The mental unit is found in logo of gaseous matter. The astral permanent atom in logo of liquid matter. The physical permanent atom in dense physical substance. And they therefore have their place in matter of the three lowest subplanes of the physical body of the logos. Consequently when in the process of evolution, and through initiation, man achieves the consciousness of the spiritual triad, and
and transfers his polarization into the three tri. T-H-E-G-O-I-C-R-A-Y-A-N-D-S-O-L-A-R-F-I-R-E-509 A doll permanent atom. He is simply able to function consciously in the etheric body of his particular planetary logos. Work out the analogy in the microcosmic development and note how in order to function consciously in his individual etheric body a man has to burn through what has been called the etheric web, and study how the fires of initiation produce something analogous in the planetary etheric body, and eventually in the cosmic etheric. As each unit of consciousness, through self-induced effort, achieves the goal and crosses the burning ground, a microscopic portion of the etheric web of the planetary etheric body is consumed by fire. This results in a definite gain for that great entity, the planetary logos, through the relatively unimportant liberation of the force of one cell in his body. When all the units or cells in his body have achieved, he too is set free from dense manifestation and physically dies. This stage is succeeded by the comparatively brief one of etheric existence covering the period of planetary obscuration and then he is liberated from incarnation altogether. Viewing this process from the standpoint of the logos, the Brahma aspect passes out, or the light withdraws from the physical permanent atom, leaving later stages on cosmic levels, with which we need not concern ourselves. These cover the withdrawal of the logo of light from out of the other two aspects. In the solar, System, which is a physical incarnation of the Logos, the Brahma aspect is apparently the most important, it being the medium of expression, yet it is the subjective aspect, or the life desire of the Logos which is fundamentally of moment, this concerns his endeavor on high levels, and on cosmic planes beyond the can of the highest Chohan. It might be of value here if I pointed out that the ego of Ray of the human unit 67 with which we are. Con. 67 the human ray. Each human center is a crystallized ray of the absolute one that has worked through processes of evolution into what is known as a human being. Some thoughts on the Gita. 510 ATREATISCONCOSMICFIRE Concerning ourselves, manifests as regards each ray just as does the logo of manifestation. Each of the seven rays, viewed in connection with the causal bodies of men, demonstrates as a unity on the first subplane, as a triplicity on the second and as seven on the third, forming there the 49 groups which most concern evolving man. According to the angle of vision, this numbering of groups may be increased or lessened, but for purposes of studying the aspects of mind, the above enumeration suffices. In the course of his many septenary lives, and as the cyclic sevens pass over him, man passes under the influence of the seven sub-rays of his own ray. Then he begins to synthesize and merge the seven into the major three sub-rays, returning thus to unity on his own egoic ray. First, the septenary status governs the time from individualization till he enters upon the path. Second, the threefold status governs the time up till the third initiation. Third, he achieves the unity of his ray by the fifth initiation, and is then consciously a part of the body of the heavenly man. The same 
idea can be worked out in connection with the awakening of the life forces within the permanent atoms, viewing each atom as the seventh principle in each of the three aspects of the personality. 2. Their place in the egoic body. A. The importance of the astral permanent atom. There is one fact to be grasped in connection with the place of the permanent atom within the causal periphery and its evolution, that needs to be emphasized with care, and that is that the astral permanent atom in this solar system is the recipient of a great flow of force or energy, and receives more stimulation and energy than any of the others, and this for the following reasons. T-H-E-E-G-O-I-C-R-A-Y-A-N-E-S-O-L-A-R-F-I-R-E 511 First, the center of polarization for the fourth, our human kingdom, is in the astral consciousness viewing this kingdom as a unity and expression. From the astral, and through the desire nature, the majority of men inevitably direct and control the physical vehicle. The astral body is in the direct line of force via the Buddhic from monodic levels, 2, 4, 6. Second, the goal set before humanity is that of becoming masters of the wisdom, our conscious units in the body of the dragon of wisdom or love. This a man achieves when he can function consciously in the Buddhic vehicle, or when the astral permanent atom is superseded by the Buddhic permanent atom. Third, the next reason is that the second aspect of the Logos that of love or the manifestation of the love nature of the Logos through the medium of the sun is the one demonstrated in this system. This system is A. B. C. Asin of necessity, or of desire. Vibrant to the key of the cosmic ray of love. The form through which this ray of cosmic love, shown in the interrelation between the self and the not-self, or through duality, is expressing itself the Governed by the cosmic law of attraction, the monads of love are the dominating quality. I choose this word, quality, specifically. Closing parenthesis. Fourth, the center in the cosmic body of the one about whom not may be said of which our solar logos is the embodied force as the heart center. Here we have one of the clues to the mystery of electricity. The sacred planets, with certain allied etheric spheres within the ring pass not, are parts of that heart. Center, and are petals in the lotus, or in the heart center of that great unknown existence who stands to the solar logos as he in his turn stands to the heavenly. 512 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. Men who are his senders, and especially as he stands to the particular heavenly man who is the embodied force of the logoic heart center. Therefore, it will be apparent to the careful student that the entire force and energy of the system and its life quality will be that which we call having her force to use handicapping, misleading words. Love. This will account for the fact that the force that plays through that cosmic heart center will be the paramount force found in the manifestation of a solar logos, and of a heavenly man, it will likewise produce its microcosmic analogy, and reflective reactions, hence the relative importance of the astral permanent atom within the causal periphery. It is in the direct line of astral force emanating from the cosmic existence, and passing to it an ever-lessening degree, via the solar logos in his system of love, and the planetary logos within a scheme, the dragon of wisdom love. 
This force when rightly directed and properly controlled is the great transmuting agency, which eventually will make of the human unit a master of the wisdom, a lord of love, a dragon of wisdom in lesser degree. Finally, this solar system, the objective physical manifestation of the Logos, is interpenetrated by his astral body, as is the case with the human manifestation. As the Logos is polarized in his cosmic astral sheath and has not yet attained cosmic mental polarization, his force or desire nature is the main incentive for the subjective life and lives that underlie the form. If the student will ponder with care these five facts, he will get a clue to the problems of existences realized around us, to the causes of the heat of the solar system, to the method of the cosmic law of attraction and repulsion, which governs all atomic forms, and to the question of sex which is apparent in every kingdom of nature. They give the clue also to the constitution of the divine hermaphrodite. T-H-E-E-G-O-I-C-R-A-Y-A-N-D-S-O-L-A-R-F-I-R-E 513 Therefore, it is necessary to bear in mind the relative importance of the permanent atom of the second aspect of the personality within the causal periphery, and to remember that the force which flows through that atom and which is the animating force of the astral body is following the lines of least resistance and really might be considered as bearing upon his physical manifestation in a manner twice as strong as that reaching him through the other two. The Logos expresses himself now through the divine ray, his second aspect, and this ray is the sum total of the radiation of the lords of wisdom, the heavenly men, the dragons who are unity and who are love. Through them this force flows and they in turn clothe themselves with forms for his age. He, B, expresses it, the primordial ray becomes the Bahan for the divine ray. 68 Their life animates every atom of substance when built into form, and their life is the sum total of logoic magnetism, or the great desire nature of the logos going out after the not-self, producing the cosmic marriage, it is the logoic demonstration of the sex appeal, his search for his polar opposite, and their mystic union. This process is repeated by the microcosm following the line of his being, and this brings him likewise into incarnation, or into mystic union with form. B. The Atomic Triangle the causal sheath is to the clairvoyant therefore a sphere of vibrant living substance, within it can be seen three fiery points. At the heart of the sphere is a central blaze of light, emitting. 68 The divine ray contains within itself seven other rays. It is the swan with the seven young ones. It is the logos of love wisdom with the seven planetary logoi. It is the grand man of the heavens, with the seven heavenly men. It is the one boundless principle, with the seven principles. This is subjectively, it is the seven planets with their informing entities. It is the seven planes with their animating principles. Love wisdom is the manifestation of the astral or desire nature of the solar logos. S. D. I. 103. 514 ATRE ATISE on cosmic fire. Rays. These rays are given as seven in number, and play upon these points or circles analogous to the electrons in the atoms of science and at this stage produce most effect upon the astral permanent atom. The physical permanent atom has a position relatively close to the positive center, and the force plays through it, and passes.
onto the astral permanent atom in the form of five rays of party colored light which blend with the intensely vivid hue of the astral permanent atom and increase its intensity until the blaze is so excessive that it appears to the onlooker as if the two points blended or the two electrons merge and in merging produce such an intensity of light that they are seen as dissolving the mental unit having a position within the causal body analogous to the planet furthermost from the sun becomes vibrant likewise and the two other points considered now as one begin to interact with the mental unit and a similar process is set up and is pursued until these two points circulating around their positive center also approach each other blend merge and dissolve the center a positive light gathers or synthesizes the three points and thus the three fires of the personality repeat on their tiny scale the microcosmic procedure is seen in the synthesis of electric fire solar fire and fire by friction and only a blazing unit is left this blazing unit through the combined heat of its being burns up the causal body and escapes back onto the planes of abstraction thus man is the path itself and also the pilgrim upon the path thus does he burn but is also the burning ground the analogy holds true in the case of the microcosm viewed from monadic levels in his manifestation as monad ego and personality and thus the process is carried on as it concerns a heavenly man and likewise a solar logos should the brain suffice to hold the concept thus T-H-E-E-G-O-I-C-R-A-Y-A-N-D-S-O-L-A-R-F-I-R-E 515 Is the process also on cosmic levels for such high existences as the seven rishis of the great bear, and that still greater being, the one about whom not M-A-Y-B-E-S-A-I-D? 3. The Spirulli and the Egoic Ray we will take up now the subject of the spirulli within the permanent atom, and see in what manner they are affected by the egoic ray, remembering always that we are considering them as, first, the interior economy of the life germ on the three planes which concern man in the three worlds, second, as the seventh principle in each of the three sheets, and third, as the positive nucleus of force which holds together the matter of the three sheets. Let us therefore study two things. The composition of the permanent atom. The difference between the mental unit and the astral and physical permanent atoms. To do this with clarity, and so bring some kind of definite concept into being from the dark regions of abstraction, let us tabulate. A. The composition of the permanent atom. The permanent atom of the astral and physical planes is a sphere of physical or astral substance, composed of atomic matter, and characterized by the following qualities, responsiveness. This is its inherent power to respond to the vibration of someone of the heavenly men, as it is transmitted via the diva, or Brahma aspect, of his threefold nature. The permanent atom finds its place within the sphere of influence of one or other of the great devas who are the Raja lords of a plane. Form building power. These devas sound forth two syllables of the threefold microcosmic word and are each on their own plane the coherent agency which gathers. 516-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E -E -E. Substance into form, and attracts matter for purposes of objectivity. The astral sound produces the microcosmic, 
sun of necessity, and when it reverberates on the physical plane produces physical incarnation, and the sudden appearance on etheric levels of the seven centers. The building of the dense physical is the result of consequent automatic action in Deva essence, for it must ever be borne in mind that man is essentially, as regards the physical plane, an etheric being, and his dense physical body is esoterically regarded as, below the threshold, and is not considered a principle. Relative Permanency in the seventh principle of all manifesting entities is stored up in developed capacity, acquired ability, and the atomic memory, or in other words the heredity of the thinker, viewing him from the physical standpoint or from the emotional. There is no permanence whatever in the sheets, they are built into temporary forms and dissolved when the thinker has exhausted their possibilities, so the seventh principle of each sheath gathers to itself the achieved qualities and stores them up under the law of karma to work out again and to demonstrate as the plain impulse in each fresh cycle of manifestation. This permanency is itself likewise only a relative one, and as the inner fire within the atom burns more brightly, as the external fires of the ego or solar fire beat upon it with ever increasing intensity, the atom in due time is consumed, and the inner blaze becomes so great that it destroys its encompassing wall. Heat. Herein lies the distinction between the permanent atoms on all planes, and the atomic matter of which they form a part. It is not easy to make this distinction clear, nor is it desirable at this time. The true facts of the case are one of the guarded secrets of initiation, but the distinction between the permanent atom and atomic matter may be somewhat comprehended if we state. T-H-E-G-O-I-C-R-A-Y-A-N-D-S-O-L-A-R-F-I-R-E 517 The permanent atom is one that has been appropriated by one of the lives that form the centers in the body of a solar lord, whilst atomic matter per se goes to the formation of other parts of his great body of life. A permanent atom is one which has come under the attractive power of the second aspect, whilst atomic matter itself is vitalis by the life of the third aspect. A permanent atom follows the line of the least resistance of force, and is passing out of the control of the Diva Lord and coming under the control of positive life. This concerns the evolution of consciousness in substance. A permanent atom comes under the direct control of the lower of the three groups of Lucifer Lords, and is the agency through which they work in the imposition of karma upon the particular entity who may be utilizing it. They work directly with the permanent atoms of men, and produce results through the agency of form until they have exhausted the vibratory capacity of any particular atom. When this is the case the atom passes into the stage of obscuration, as does the seventh principle of any sheep. It comes under the influence of the first aspect, manifesting as the destroyer. Remember that in these affirmations we are concerning ourselves with the microcosm, and with the permanent atoms which are related to him. As regards the solar logos manifesting in the system, we are concerned with but one permanent atom, and this is his physical permanent atom. It is thus true that within the permanent physical atom of the solar logos lies in the ability to respond consciously to the vibration of all the planes, lies in the secret of the karmic purpose of his incarna. 518-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E Tion, and lies concealed the mystery of his functional activity, but we cannot 
cannot penetrate the secret as yet of his three lower permanent atoms as they function as a unity within his causal vehicle. Until we can do this it is useless for us to conjecture as to his fundamental being. The difference between them, the mental unit is in a unique and peculiar position as regards man, the thinker and the causal body. This point will be discussed shortly, suffice it to say here that its mystery lies hidden the nature of the heavenly men themselves. The following correspondence holds the key to this mystery, but it can only be indicated, leaving it to the student to work out the truth for himself. On the three planes of logo manifestation of highest three we have the three aspects manifesting. On the Buddhic plane, the fourth cosmic ether, we have the logo of the centers demonstrating for those force vortices which animate the three lower planes of the dense physical manifestation. In connection with the heavenly men we have a secondary manifestation, and on the Buddhic plane we have their third aspect found, leaving for their paramount manifestation of force, the cosmic gaseous plane, or the manasic plane, they are essentially the divine thinkers, 